Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at Space Team, the cooperative space teaming game. <laughs> and also, we'll take a look at the little NSFS, the Not Safe for Space expansion. Now, I haven't played it, but supposedly this is based off of a video game. I think it's a mobile game or a tablet game, something like that, where you and other players uh, with devices are working together to save a spaceship that's being dragged, that's malfunctioning and being dragged into a black hole. Um, and I think with the mobile version, there's like, you actually do crazy stuff, like you have to manipulate the the, uh, your tablet or uh, phone in some way or somehow. I don't know. Someone in my group said that he played it and had a lot of fun with it and was desperately wanting to play this because of that reason. So uh, we finally gave it a shot. So I have no experience with the video game. I can't judge it based on that. I only know what this game is. And how they chose to implement it is it's a card game. You and the other players are working together using tool cards from your hand in order to solve uh, malfunctions happening on your spaceship. The only problem is you have five minutes to do this. There's a stand timer in the game and you all have to take your turn simultaneously. So it's a little bit easier said than done to actually fix your ship. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at how the game works. Then we're gonna come back, I'll let you know what I think. In Space Team, one to five players work cooperatively together to save themselves and their malfunctioning spaceship from a black hole. Each player resolves malfunction and anomaly cards one by one, trying to get each section of the ship working properly by using tool cards. The catch, however, is that you only have five minutes to do all of this, and you'll all be working on the ship and trying to help each other simultaneously. For setup, take all the tool cards, shuffle them, and deal them out evenly to all players. These should be kept as your hand of cards, not open for everyone to see. Tools have three components to them. A picture, a name, and a type, depicted by a symbol in the top corner. This is essentially a symbol matching game, and you'll need to quickly discern what's on a card to use it to fix a malfunction. The rest of the setup involves the malfunction deck, which is actually a catch-all term for three types of cards that are mixed together. Malfunctions, Anomalies, and Systems Go cards. Malfunctions have a picture, name, and requirements box. This tells you what tools you must use to fix it, by either naming a specific tool, showing a picture of a specific tool, or showing a type symbol, which means any tool with that symbol could be used. Anomalies are crazy random events that affect the team. They'll force the players to do wacky things like switch seats or put their hands on each other or shout out a certain phrase before they can proceed with fixing the malfunctions. The system's go cards are your goal. These will be buried amongst the malfunction cards and finding them represents getting different parts of the ship online. If all six are found and assembled in the center of the table, you've won the game. Make a deck of malfunctions and anomalies at random based on a chart in the instruction booklet. The more of these you have, the more difficult the game will be. Afterwards, shuffle in the system's go cards. Then, deal out the entire deck as evenly as possible to every player, except this time you keep the cards face down in front of yourself in a stack without looking at them ahead of time. With tools in hand and malfunction stack in front of you, flip the sand timer. Each player immediately flips over their malfunction stack so that the bottom card is now face up. Players now begin simultaneously trying to fix the malfunctions in front of them with their tools. You put the indicated tools face up in front of the current malfunction until the requirement is met. Then remove the malfunction from your stack and put it face down off to the side and pick up the used tools to make your hand again. If you need a tool that you don't have, which will happen, you can yell for help from the other players. But whoever actually has that tool card can't just give it to you directly unless they're seated right next to you. If there are two or more people away, they must pass it along from player to player to get it to you. If an anomaly pops up on your stack, you must tell everyone to stop and clearly announce what you must all do to get past it. Then remove the anomaly and keep going. If a systems go card pops up on your stack, stop whatever else you're doing, yell out the name of the card, for example, communications are go, and place it in the center of the table. They combine to form a picture of the ship. When that happens, you've won the game. But if you can't find them all before the timer runs out, you all die horribly in the black hole. Or you get twisted across time and space in some sort of trippy, low-budget movie sequence. And the villain gets melded into the evil robot, I think? And they're in, like, hell, I guess? 
And he's now Satan? Or something? Seriously, what was up with the end of that movie? That was so, so bad. Anyways, there's also a small expansion for Space Team called the Not Safe for Space expansion. This is the expansion to get if you feel that board games in general suffer from a lack of dildos, space toilets, and hokey puns like the Master Beta Enhancer. There actually is a piece of machinery in real life called a ball cock, though, so be sure to remind Grandma of that when you're playing this with her. Mechanically speaking, the expansion just adds more variety of tools, malfunctions, and anomalies, and it allows you to play with up to nine players instead of the previous max of six. Let's get to my final thoughts. Now, to people who know me uh, in my gaming group and also to hardcore fans of the channel who have been around for a while and seen a lot of the videos, you probably know I have uh, a a strong distaste for real-time games. There's only a few of them that have really worked for me. Uh, Zombie 15, which is back here somewhere as a game, but that's because Zombie 15 gives you 15 minutes. It's not quite as much of a time crunch and there's not like frantically throwing stuff around and yelling at each other. Um, that's why one of the reasons I don't like Escape and why I didn't uh, escape the Curse of the Temple and why I didn't like a game that is very, very similar to Space Team called Meteor from Mayday Games because that one was also five minutes and Escape is five minutes. It's just like it's too brief a period of time. Everyone's frantically throwing stuff around. Everyone's yelling at each other. I'm never sure if anyone is doing any of the rules right, including myself. And it just, it's just not something that I enjoy. However, I like Space Team. I like it quite a bit. I can't say that I love it because inherently I'm just not going to love a game that has these real-time elements. But this one, I think, is just handled so much better than the other games that are similar to this. And I think the main reason for it is just how smooth and simple it is. Not simple necessarily to a fault to where you're not really doing anything. You're still having to... Uh, have a a lot of like uh, matching skills and uh, working very cooperatively together with the other players but because it's it's so easy to get into and so easy to run you never have that fear of uh, I don't know if I'm doing this right (laughs) instead everyone just gets to enjoy the game for what it is but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, so I'll mention the components first, uh, which are really good. They used uh, plastic cards, which are a pain when you're actually trying to manipulate stacks of them because they slide all over the place. But they're very durable. And for a game like this, that is completely necessary. And they shuffle very well as well. So I really dug the component quality. As far as the theme goes, uh, they had a lot of fun with it. I like the, well, back to the, the presentation, uh, they go with this sort of minimalistic, almost like retro style artwork for it and i think it suits the game well as well as the theme where um you know it does you're you're trying to save the spaceship and they could have gone in a very serious direction with it where they actually like with like with star trek or old school star trek not the movies where spock is a rage monster (laughs) where everything has a name and it's a very technical name and you're really concerned about the technical aspects here they just made up some really nonsense words for (laughs) most of the gear and i totally appreciated the humor in that where it's like the the flange needs to go for the diffuser and that kind of stuff so i dug that and so i i, I kind of dig the theme here um and then as far as the gameplay goes the the setup is very simple and so is you know just getting into the game teaching the game takes five minutes the same amount of time it takes to play it but in this case that's fine because it's only five minutes um and actually going through the motions again it's very fast and you all have to work simultaneously but it you still feel like you're in control the whole time, and I do appreciate that. And it's a very simple game. You're just matching up the symbols on your cards, or the text, or the um, the you know what the the picture of what it's called. But I like the idea of there's these little rules that make the game more cooperative. Like you have to pass a card around rather than hand it to them directly if you're across the table from them. It seems like such a simple thing, a minor thing, but it, it matters. It really does, and it kind of enhances the cooperation between the different team members. Same thing with the anomalies. Some of them are just ridiculous, of course, especially in the not safe for space expansion. But hey, it is something you have to learn. Like hey, when it's when I have this anomaly and this is happens, everyone drop what you're doing, and we have to put our hands on our shoulders or we have to yell at someone to get a hold of yourself that kind of thing and it's it's kind of fun it's kind of wacky but really when you get into it you you treat it very seriously because you do try to do as well as you possibly can in this game despite it being so simple and despite it being so silly uh i as far as difficulty of the game goes it's really not that tough it certainly is but when you have the machine going when it's uh when you really got the game under your belt it's not that tough we went from easy to medium to i think very hard we no, we did hard 
um, with no problem. We won each time. So I think you can make an argument that it uh, might be a little bit too simple. But then again, we played with four and five players. The game can go up to six in the base game and also nine with the expansion, which might be completely, utterly chaotic randomness. I don't know. Maybe eventually I'll try that. Uh, but it makes me think that with more players, it would be more difficult because you're trying to herd cats at a certain point. Like, hey, down there, you're shouting to the end of the table to, <laughs> to get the tool that you need. So uh, I think that's the only way the difficulty would become more pronounced. And you can always cater it to however you really want it to be. But uh, overall, I like it. The not safe for space expansion, I would say, is unnecessary unless you really want to play with those more players. But if you do do want to do that and you decide to purchase it it is nice to have more variety of cards yeah they're naughty cards but honestly some of them are so subtle not necessarily uh intelligently subtle i should say but uh, some of them are subtle enough that you probably wouldn't even notice especially in the heat of the moment um and some of them are juvenile but i still laughed a little bit so uh but it's good to have more variety especially of the anomalies so Overall, I like it. I like Space Team. Uh, more than I thought that I would, I'm probably going to hold on to it because I know a lot of people in my group really enjoyed it and even more people I haven't introduced it to yet will also enjoy it as well. So for a real-time game, definitely my kind of thing. That is Space Team from... Space Team Team? Not quite sure. I'll have it on the placard. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.